Hello everyone and welcome to the Unfound Podcast channel. In this video, I will be describing and showing you uh, the disappearance of Brennan Smokey. And that's a disappearance uh, that we covered on October 30th, 2020, and his mother Missy was the guest. Uh, before I get started, if you are watching this video, please remember to give this video uh, a thumbs up. Uh, you can do that on the application, in the application, on the device that you are using to watch this video. So I remind you to do that. I also want to remind you, if you are not yet a subscriber to the Unfound Podcast channel, uh, please consider doing so, so that when we do upload new videos like this one, uh, you get an alert and you know about it right away. All right, what you're looking at here is uh, the very southern part of Mississippi. And down here at the bottom is Bay St. Louis, not St. Louis, Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. And we had talked about in the uh, interview uh, Delisle, it's not Delisle, it's Delisle, Mississippi over here. Now, this route that you see here, I just want to be clear with uh, everyone. I am not clear on the exact route um, that happened the day the chase occurred. I do not know that. I think only the police would know that. I don't even know if Missy knows that. But she did say that it started in Bay St. Louis, right here, and ended at approximately this point up here, which is the exit, thinks it's, I think it's exit 20 on Interstate 10 that goes to Delisle, Mississippi. Now, did the chase start here? Did it start over here? Did it start here? Did it start here? I have no idea, okay? But you heard Missy talk about it, and what's most important is where it ended up here. But I just wanted to show you a, genu uh, a general route from Bay St. Louis to this point, this is the quickest route. I do not want you to think that I believe they took the quickest route. Uh, I, I don't, like I said, I'm not sure anybody knows that except the police who chased them that day. Um, nobody seems to know where they were going. I think in most cir uh, circumstances when people are fleeing the police, a lot of them are just driving. They may have a particular idea of where they're trying to go, but uh, sometimes, of course, the police get in the way of that. Traffic gets in the way of that. Uh, Stoplights and all sorts of other things can get in the way of that. So I'm not sure whoever was in the car, Chris Dakota and whoever, whether it was Brennan or not, I'm not sure what their plan was going out here on uh, Interstate 10. I don't know if Chris and Dakota have ever admitted that to anybody. So I'm going to now zoom in on this particular point. Once again, Interstate 10, Exit 20. And I'm not sure about the exact location, but I do know that it was somewhere in here. If you read the news articles, they said it was very close to Exit 20 on Route 10. So in this area right here. The big question is, no matter if it was Brennan or not who successfully fled the scene, how did that person get away? And I think in looking at this satellite view on Google Maps, I'm guessing some of you may look at this and say, well, I really can't uh, understand it either because we do see businesses here. We see a housing development over here. We see, uh, obviously, where trees have been cleared out. I don't know, know what these areas are, but we see roads. We see a lot of, not barren areas, but a lot of grass and dirt, and not as many trees as you can see in here. So some of you are going to probably think, well, it's, I, I think he could have you know, run off this direction, that direction, and got through these fields, and if this isn't too thick enough, who knows? In addition, you should see right here, uh, I should show you this, maybe I'll zoom out uh, a little bit. You probably saw it in the previous uh, picture when we were zoomed out. This Bay St. Louis, it's not just a city, but there is a bay called Bay St. Louis. The water is right there. 
And that may be something that you may want to consider uh, when you think about how Brennan or whoever else got away uh, from this chase. Maybe they went into the water some for, for some reason. So I think some of you uh, may look at this satellite view and see all of this and say, well, I could see somebody, Brennan or somebody, actually escaping. It's, I would say that it's certainly not uh, the remotest um, place that a, that a person has gone off missing. Uh, abandon a car or or something like that. Surely not. Um, but for those of you who are maybe thinking the other way, in looking at a, a um, and I'm not, I'm not going to do this on her, but on a street view, because I don't want to, um, because I'll have to redo all this. Um, this area is, is pretty thick. And Missy even talked about that, I think, in the interview, that Yes, there are these areas that are clear, but the areas between them uh, might be just as they were thousands of years ago, where no man or woman has ever set, set foot. And it could be easy to understand if Brennan or whoever picked the wrong direction, got in here somewhere, might have gotten lost, might have tripped... And there remains, I'm not saying I personally believe that, I don't know, but they could still be out there, the remains, and it was just some accident that caused uh, that person to never reappear. Now, if you believe it was Sean Bilbo, as we talked about in the interview, now he, of course, is still around, so if it was he who ran off, somehow he did find a way to get out of here. But if it was Brennan, who has never been seen again, then maybe something else happened. Once again, that's for you to decide. If you want to get an idea of how big some of these areas are, the, the key is down here in the bottom right-hand corner. The distance from, let's say, Interstate 10 right here to this area, which is some sort of plant or something, it looks to me to be about a quarter of a mile. Just to give you an idea, this from the interstate to the edge of this dark green is about a quarter mile. And just how thick is this from Interstate 10 up into this line? It looks like a little path, a little dirt road or something. That looks to be about 2,200 feet. So that's not even a half a mile. So these areas, you know, a quarter of a mile, not that far. 2,200 feet, not that far. But if it's thick... You just never know uh, what can happen. And also, this would make, being that these areas are so thick, it would make it tough to search. That may be one of the reasons that the police did not put a lot of work into it, on top of the fact that they believe that whoever the third person was that ran off would just show up somewhere, given that Chris and Dakota at least originally uh, stated that it was Brennan who was the third person. So the cops are just saying, oh, we just have to keep an eye out for this guy and, and we'll catch him. Of course, we know Brennan never reappeared. So that could be the reason the police didn't want to get in there. It thought he was going to uh, reappear somewhere anyway. But looking at some of this, they might have thought, you know, is it really worth it? Because I think we have to remember in chases like this, it's the driver who gets in uh, the most trouble because I think the passengers can always say, what are we was supposed to do? He's flying down the highway at 100 miles an hour. You want us to jump out and kill ourselves? I mean, we're totally out of the control of the vehicle here. If we try to stop him, we might we may all get killed. So there is a line of thinking that unless, you know, depending, of course, what is found in the car afterwards, that... Sometimes passengers can get off scot-free in a lot of these chases because it's the driver who uh, is, is driving. Still, whoever that third person was who wasn't driving still ran off and um, seemingly has not been found. So it might not have been a big deal to the police that somebody who wasn't driving the car fled because they're probably figuring, well, eventually... I don't know if we're going to be able to pin anything on him. Anyway, now Missy did talk about uh, the family going out there, but they're, of course, not 
professional searchers. Not They have no experience in this area. And these areas, once again, not some of the most remotest parts of the United States, but still, it's um, bushes and trees, thick overgrowth, undergrowth, whatever you want to call it. It's a lot of work. It, it, it is very, very difficult to go through these areas and be thorough. And on top of that, you could be feet away from remains of a human and never see those remains. I, I can certainly believe that. So that's the video for uh, Brennan Smokey. I just want to bring uh, show it to you again. The chase started allegedly somewhere down here in the Bay St. Louis area, and it ended up here on Route 10. I know what it says here, 20 minutes, 15 miles. I'm not sure we know how long the chase was. We just don't know. I don't know how many twists and turns it took before it ended right here when, as I think Missy said, that the car itself blew up. It wasn't that... Uh, that they finally decided to stop. It wasn't that they ran out of gas. It wasn't that there were strips put down to blow out the tires. Uh, she said that the car uh, just was pushed to its limits and blew up right there on Interstate 10. Had it not, who knows how long uh, the chase would have gone. But that's the video for Brendan Smokey. I hope this helps you understand uh, what went on that day a little bit more, and I hope that you can uh, include this as you ponder what happened to Brennan Smokey. Thanks for watching, and once again, please like this video and subscribe to the Unfound Podcast channel. See ya!